as you go, 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 What's up, family? Today's second part, as I say, I just finished dealing with uh, where is Jesus Christ, and no one that believes in Jesus that can show you where Jesus is because Jesus never existed and Jesus does not exist. You don't need to prove the existence of Jesus. You need the presence, the physical presence of Jesus. According to Luke 36 to 43. But now I am speaking of my living father. My living father. Is your father alive? If your father is not alive, don't worry about that. It's the same thing you have your father. Nobody in this world that does not have a father living or dead but i want to speak on living father when you say you have a living father it means your father is alive and your father can respond your father can show up your father can do certain things which you say he can do so uh, like some people say that with god nothing is impossible with god all things are possible so why is it impossible for god to show himself to all his creatures as you believe he created all if God is living if God is not dead if God cares about you if God cares about his world if God cares about the people he call his children or his people why is it impossible for God to show himself so that to put to rest the confession among his worshippers among his children why is it impossible for God if God is living? So if God is your father, have you seen that your father? Your father is alive. You know where your father is, yet you cannot see that your father. You believe it's your father. That father is wicked. That father is useless to you. Your living father that you cannot see is useless to you. What can your living father do for you when your living father cannot show up in your time of need? When you have, your living father cannot come and say, I defend my child. If God is your father, why is your God not touched by your suffering, unnecessary suffering? Know how you are gnashing your teeth in your family, in your life, in your affairs, in your relationship. See what you are suffering in your marriage. See what you are suffering in your business. See what you are suffering in all your affairs. Where is your father? He have not show up. But you have the nerves to defend him, to say he cares about you. He loves you. No. Let me use myself and our daughter as example. I am here in America. In my apartment, I already paid for everything for, although I am not in America, but I already pay my monthly rent bills in America. So I tell my, our daughter to occupy till I come. I say, use anything as you want because I already paid in full. I'm not owing. I've paid the rent, paid everything. The Wi-Fi is on. I paid for everything. Use them. And she is using them. She sit there, call me on, on video chat. And we chat. Video chat. Father and daughter. Father and child. Child and father. If God is your father, why is God not showing up? Why you say God has put you in this world? For what? I put our daughter there in my own house. 
Tell her to use everything. She's not going to pay me anything back. She's not going to pay me tithe. She's not going to pay me offering. She's not going to say, oh, when my dad come back, he, she will beat me. She will say, why am I here? No. She's there. Everything paid in full. She's not supposed to pay for anything. In case anyone come harassing her, say, oh, what are you doing here? You have to pay. She will just call me. Audio or video chat. And I will show up. If they say I must come in person, I give them date, so so date, I will be there, and I will be there. If God is your father, if God is your living God, your living father, that that God is alive, why is God not showing up? He said He has given you everything in the world. Why are you still paying for it? If God, your father, has given you everything in the world to enjoy, and somebody is making you to pay for them, where is he coming to say no? That's why you should understand this place. Let me read it. Welcome to Bible study. Job chapter 9. This is typical God. You are God. This is exactly your condition, and you are God. 9, 23, and 24. He says, if the scourge slays suddenly, God laughs at the plight of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of his judges. He said, if it is not God, who else could it be? You said God is almighty. He said God created all things. So why are you suffering and dying and this God remain there laughing at your plight? That's what it means. When God could not prevent rape, when God could not prevent robbery, when God could not prevent accident, when God could not prevent bad things happening to his children who he left into the, in this world for whatever reason they wrote there, that God is heartless. That God is useless. That God does, he does not deserve your praise, worship, or thanksgiving. The living father that you cannot see is your imagination. The living God that you cannot see is your imagination. It does not exist in reality. If your father exists in reality, your father will show up. If your father is not buried, dead and buried in the grave, your father will show up. Somebody say, are you all right? Of course, look at me. I am better than God. I am better than Jesus. I am better than almighty creator. I am better than them. The people worship. If God, your father, is alive, and they cannot show up, especially in your time of need. You are telling me he's using somebody. That's bullshit. If your father is alive and able to do things, he doesn't supposed to use anyone to do. It's when he's not able to do something, that's when he will use somebody. He may send somebody. But if he's alive and powerful, all powerful, there is no reason for you to say he's using anyone or anything to bless you or to save you. No, he's supposed to do that directly. He said, call on me. I will answer you and I will deliver you. He hasn't done that. Say, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you know not. He hasn't done that. There is no single promises of God in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah that can be materialized today. Why? Because God is dead. God does not exist. It is people telling you he exists. Tell yourself the truth. You know who tell you about God. God never speak to anyone. So when they tell you God spoke to me, they are liars. When they tell you God said, they are liars. They are imposters. There is no God anywhere speaking to anyone or sending anyone. If God is alive, you won't be praying in the first place. 
the reason why you are praying is to pretend that there is God. Your prayer is a sign of pretense. Prayer is pretense. When you say, let us pray, you are saying, let us pretend. When you say you are praying to me, you say you are, praying, you are pretending to me. I don't need your pretense. I need your physical presence. I need your cash. I need your money, not your prayer. Don't pray for me. Don't send your thoughts to me. Send me money. Now you know we are talking. If prayer is as real as money, no pastor will be saying, I will, let me, I will pray for, I am praying for you. I will pray for you. Come, let us pray. Let us join us together and pray. How many times have they asked you, come, let us eat together? How many times have they sent money to you? Because money is real. Money is what you can make. Prayer is pretense. God is imaginary. You are living further that you cannot see. Remember the example I gave to you. My daughter is right there in my house using everything I paid for. I am not asking her to give me any tithe or offering. Why are you giving tithe and offering to your rich father? It is a cause. It is wrong for you to be giving to the rich. He said, he that give to the rich and he that rob the poor, both of them will end in poverty. That's why you see like people like Nigeria, I mean, places like Nigeria becomes headquarters of poverty in the whole world. They are robbing the poor and giving to the rich. The poor will take the little money that we used to take care of themselves and give to the rich pastor. Give to Bishop Oyedemo, give to Pastor Ademoye, give to this man of God, give to that. And they are suffering. They say they are sowing seed, they are keen in, they are tapping and nothing. They are waiting for God to open heaven. Come on. Are, who closed heaven in the first place? If there is rain around you, if rain ever fell since you were born, that will show you that heaven is not closed. Come on. Trust their God. Trust their doctrine. Stop living in the fear of God. That is the worst bondage you can ever have. Fear of God is bondage. The fear of God is the beginning of bondage. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of God you have not seen or can see? You are afraid because of what somebody wrote in a book about God. The living father you cannot see in you is, is your imagination. And praying to that father is pretense. You know your father died. You cannot see your father. And you are saying, father, like those people praying to their ancestors. That's bullshit. You have to wake up. You have to think and stop thinking to yourself. Your ignorance stinks. Nothing stinks like your ignorance. You have to kill that ignorance with knowledge. You need the knowledge of your own truth. You are the truth you are seeking for. You are the God you are seeking for. You are the Christ you are seeking for. You are the life you are seeking for. My living father cares about me. I am a living father that cares about my child. How about your God? Who we say you are God is alive. I am serving a living God. Where is he? You are serving a living God. I'm robbers robbing you. You are serving a living God. Impostors and the fraud stars defrauding you. You are serving a living God. Flooding husbands men killing you. You are serving a living God. The government making your life miserable. You are serving a living God. One of them tell me in another way, he say, you know, that's what we face. You know, that I say, no, because you don't want to revolt. He say, how about those that revolt? How happen? I say, because they are afraid of dying. We are afraid of dying. And that's why the wicked know and keep taking advantage of that. They send the men, they should go, Papa, you run away because you are a coward. And that's what faith has made us. Faith made us cowards. Faith made, made us gullible. Faith made us docile. Oh, I'm waiting for God. God will come and deal with them. God will fight my battle. God will judge my enemies. God will that. God will this. God is not doing anything. God does not exist. If that God exists, you believe that your God exists, let that your God show up here. If you say it's a mystery, it's because it's a lie. Mystery is a lie. Mystery is ignorance. If you think you cannot know it, it's because you are afraid of truth. 
You can know it if you dare to know. Wake up and trust God. Trust religion and live humanly. Peace.